Good morning and welcome to Virtual Church with Holy Cross Anglican Church in Vancouver. I'm Lucy, I'm the vicar at Holy Cross and uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to virtual worship with us this morning. Uh, if you've not been with us before, you will probably want one of these. Uh, this is the service booklet which can be downloaded on our website under the video at www.holycross.vcn bc.ca and if you click the virtual church tab look for the pdf directly under the video and you'll find if you've been to an anglican service before you probably re recognize some of the format and responses we will read the psalm together uh, today our psalm is psalm 139 verses 1 to 11 so if you have a copy of your bible with you then psalm 139 verses 1 to 11 and then, uh, actually, sorry, and then verses 22 and 23. Okay, let's take a minute and uh, make ourselves ready for prayer. O Lord, open our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. We say together the Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make my grave, the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day Darkness and light to you are both alike. Verse 22. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there is any wickedness in me and lead me in the way that is everlasting. God of mystery and power, even our minds and hearts are the veils and signs of your presence. We come in silent wonder to learn the way of simplicity, the eternal road that leads to love for you and for your whole creation. We come as your son, Jesus Christ, taught us and in his name. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Genesis, beginning at the 28th chapter. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in all your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. 
and he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not in the flesh, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that shall be received to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, for in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The, Lord, the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up that bore the grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go out and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at the harvest time I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of Christ. Between the words that are spoken and the words that are heard, may the Spirit of God be always present. Amen. Sitting in the church of my childhood with my feet dangling over the end of the pew, 
I heard this gospel for the first time, or at least that's the first time I remember hearing it. The week before, I'd been on sparkling form as an older sibling and had actually mowed my poor sister down with a shopping trolley at the grocery store. And on hearing this story, my greatest fear was that Jesus would realise that I was a weed and that I would be thrown into a pit of fire, which is much worse than being mowed down by a trolley. I know that using public trolleys now as weapons is wrong and uh, I still find myself from time to time worrying, however, that I am indeed a weed and that at some point I will be discovered. I think many people hear this story and wonder what constitutes being a weed? How bad do you have to be? What do you have to have done to be gathered up with the weeds? There's a cautionary tale there for sure, but there's also a word of encouragement. The master says, let them grow up together. In real life, a weed couldn't grow and become wheat, but parables have limits, and within the limits of this one, I hear the gift of grace and time to grow and to learn and to transform, and maybe through the transformative power of God, for whom nothing is impossible, over time, the weed would become wheat. I was speaking with a young woman once who felt that she was unworthy of God's love. She told me once that she thought she'd burst into flames the first time she returned to church, such was her conscience. The psalmist knows a thing or two about the ins and outs of our conscience in relation to God. They write about the infinite, intimate knowledge that God has of each of us, our comings and goings, our thoughts and words, the heart of our souls. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me and lead me in the way that is everlasting. God has always reached out to humankind. God is always reaching out to us, even in the darkest, most desperate places where we feel that we are unworthy of love. God reached out to Jacob, for example, in the wilderness that night while he was on the run from his brother after stealing his birthright. He's left his family behind, he's got nothing, and he finds himself sleeping with a pillow made of a rock. But God never leaves, and God promises to be with Jacob every step of the way, and he extends the blessing that he gives him to all the families of the earth, your family and mine. Paul tells us that this family bond goes so deep that not only are we one body in Christ, but we are heirs with Christ. Christ our brother who taught us to call God our father. Now, so what does it mean to be an heir with Christ? It sounds like a lot of pressure to me. Jesus sacrificed everything for God and everything for us, leading us into this resurrected way of being, this everlasting way. Jesus tells us through his parable that judgment is coming and necessary so that we don't have to carry the weight of judging others or ourselves. We can grow into the people that God wants us to be by seeking to understand the things in our lives that lead us away from God. We know that at the end, these things will be purged from the kingdom of heaven by the reapers and God watches over us as we choose to live by the spirit and grow into the wheat that brings glory to God. God shows us again and again throughout the Bible that God is showing up, God is always reaching out and doing things too wonderful for us to imagine or understand. May God shape us for God's purposes in this world and lead us in the everlasting way that we may bear good fruit. God's will be done. Amen. Service continues on page four of the bulletin, uh, as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to stand, sit or kneel as is your custom for prayer. We pray for the world, for the worldwide Anglican Communion, our own Diocese of New Westminster, and for our companion Diocese of Northern Philippines, Bishop Brent Alois, and our partner parish in Toucan, and their priest, Paddy Ezra Catalong. We also pray for Chuba Diocese in Japan, Bishop Peter Ichiro Shibusawa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are victims of war, famine, injustice or natural disaster, especially at this time for all those affected by the coronavirus and those who seek to bring relief. For all refugees and displaced peoples, especially Nadim Iniat and his family waiting for their acceptance letter from immigration. Lord, in your mercy. In this diocese, we pray for our Archbishop and Metropolitan, Melissa Skelton, and for the parishes of St. Mary Magdalene, Vancouver, the Reverend John Marsh, the Reverend Vivian Seegers, St. Christopher, West Vancouver, the Reverend Karen Urquhart, St. Anne Steveston, the Reverend Roberta Fraser. Lord, in your mercy. In our neighbourhood, we pray for All Nation Church and in Toronto for St. Andrew's Japanese Anglican Church. We pray for our community of Holy Cross and we give thanks for the gradual reopening of our space. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all those in need, those who have asked for our prayers, especially for Masuo Takisaki, Elizabeth Nato, Mark Raja, Iris Reimer, Miwako Minato, Naomi Shimizu, Norman Pym, Carolyn and May Bailey, Alana Tatchell, Chikako McCauley, Daryl Hall, Basil Azumi, Sawa Matsuga, Suneko Maki, Mari Ohashi, Umi Sugawara, Thomas Koren, Beryl Hooper and Jamie Leakey. Please take a moment to remember others on your prayer list and name them now in silence or aloud. The Lord deliver them and keep them in his love. Lord, in your mercy. We remember those who have died, naming them now in silence or aloud. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one in the language closest to our hearts, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favour and grant us peace. Amen. No announcements for today, just to say I hope I see you next Sunday. Have a good week.